Hello hand penners, thank you for being here. Um, my name is Amy Naylor and uh, I'm clutching onto this cup of hot water because I'm very cold today. <laughs> yeah, so in the comments of my last video I got a really good question from Dimitri, thank you, um, about how to play for an hour and how to prepare for an hour long performance in concert. Um, yeah, I love this question and I'd love to answer it in three parts. Part one being preparing for a solo concert um, at a show, part two playing um, on the streets or busking, and part three playing for a yoga session or a meditation session or in an art gallery or a coffee shop or something that is a little bit more laid back. Obviously all three of those have lots of similarities um, but I think that approaching getting ready for those performances um, can be very different. Regardless of where you're performing, playing for an hour is a long time. Um, maybe you are a handpan enthusiast and you've, you already play for hours and hours at a time. Or maybe you play for 20 minutes here and there and you know, maybe you, you play for an hour but in between you check in Facebook or whatever. So um, it's really important to improve your stamina in your playing so that you don't get tired. Practice and practice and practice, drills, exercises, pieces that you've written or other people have written, whatever it is, but just with an awareness of what your body is doing and an awareness of any tension that you're holding because that's something that you want to address uh, now while you can um, before you get into a, into a performance setting. Because when you get into that performance setting, you know, all the adrenaline hits, you forget everything that you've learned and you just kind of play and you feel amazing and then afterwards then you realise, oh no, my shoulders are caning, like I was holding a lot of tension there, I didn't know at the time. But if you can be aware of that before and, and address that straight away, then naturally it won't happen anymore. Another thing that I would recommend is warming up, stretching before you even touch the pen, and this should be something that you do before practice anyway, um, but especially in performance because you want to be limber, you want to be playing at your best. Warm up your hands, stretch your hands, stretch your fingers, give yourself a massage on your hands, your forearms, so that you are playing as smooth, so that you don't tense up, again, with the adrenaline as well and the nerves, um, and so that you can play to the best of your ability, and so that you don't come away from it feeling, feeling pained, <laughs> feeling in pain. So a couple of tips before you even think about think about what you're performing or where you're performing, is to make sure that your body is ready. So in terms of performing for a concert or a show, you're gonna need some pieces of your own, some original compositions, um, or at least little bits of uh, structured improvisation where you know what's coming next so that you are prepared and you know what you're doing. You're also gonna need to find a way to make it as interesting and diverse as possible. So, I don't think it's true that you need more than one handpan. I think you can make it diverse with a single handpan if you're creative uh, and if you think outside the box. The way that I did that when I was first starting to perform was, I did play cover songs actually, um, was to use a loop pedal um, and to yeah play popular music that people liked um, and to figure out how to get as many different kind of keys and tones out of my handpan as I could. But yeah, so it's about getting to know your pan if you're stuck to one and finding out how many different things you can get out of it. And also playing in different, you know, getting having songs that are slow, right? Songs that are, you know, nice waltzes or songs that are really groovy and percussive based. Uh, songs that are, f uh, you know, just songs that only use the notes, songs that are more chordal based, songs that are um, that emphasise different uh, textures, um, structure your songs differently, so just so that you can make it as diverse as possible. The amount of compositions that you need will vary depending on uh, the length of your pieces, obviously. If they are kind of a popular song length, so around three, four, five minutes, you probably need around nine or ten um, with talking in between, if you're, if you're happy to talk in between. But of course, if your songs are longer, then you won't need as many. You might also want to um, put aside a little bit of time, depending on your audience, for explaining what the handpan actually is. Um, I played in a lot of places in my first few years of playing where people had never seen a handpan before, so to be fair, it didn't really matter how good I was, because <laughs> people are always really impressed anyway, um, regardless. But yeah, diversity, having your own compositions, finding a way to make it relatable to the to an audience and interesting for the audience, and then you're golden, then you're great. 
Um, what I would also recommend is practicing your pieces over and over and over and over and over and over again so that you can play them better than you need to at the performance because once you get there and the adrenaline hits the nerves hit you're not going to be as good as your best practice run it's just not going to happen so you want to play and practice so that you're really really happy with with how you're playing it and again to be fair to me um, for my first performances I didn't really ever get to that point <laughs> initially things always went wrong and again it doesn't matter as long as you can go wrong comfortably when you're live and by that I mean make a mistake and make it look like you did it on purpose then you're golden nobody will know you play a wrong note play that wrong note again you did it on purpose yeah or just smile and laugh and carry on or don't let don't let the audience know don't let on that that happened but yeah those are my tips for in terms of actual music making um, prepping for for a concert you also want to check in with the uh, venue, see what sound equipment is available, see what the stage is like, how big the venue is, let them know what your instrument is um, and what kind of mics and stuff you, you're going to need. It's a big topic in the handpan community is what can I mic, what can I mic the handpan with, but I'm not going to go into it here, um, but anything works. You know, anything works. So even if you are playing in a venue that doesn't have a massive budget, they've only got little vocal microphones or whatever, it will work, it's fine. Don't worry about, about what kind of microphone you're, you're using. As long as the audience can hear it, then again, you're golden. Moving on then to busking. I think that's a whole different beast altogether. Uh, that's how I started, was playing in the streets. <clears throat> My first tip is to not go crazy, don't hit it hard, um, because you will get tired very quickly. Um, the tendency when busking in busy, busy areas is to play loud, as loud as you can because other pe otherwise people can't hear you. But that's how you knock your handpan out of tune, that's how you hurt your hands, that's how you, yeah, you run out of steam after half an hour and then you don't know what to do anymore. So keep playing as you would usually play in your own room and maybe you can raise the volume a little bit but just don't don't go too hard on it if you really need to be louder consider some kind of portable amplification little acoustic um, amps you can get battery powered amps for not too expensive but generally just see if you can find not quiet spots but spots where there is some kind of natural amplification around you so that your sound carries further um, and places where people aren't loitering too much and chatting with each other places without traffic without cars um, but plenty of footfall so you want plenty of people walking past who can drop change in your hat but somewhere that yeah there's not going to be too much excess noise um, no roadworks no uh, building sites you know nothing like that you'll want some of your own compositions but this is where you have a little bit of leeway is your audience is moving so you can repeat the same 20 minute cycle four times <laughs> you, know, you could just play the same thing over and over again of course that will get boring for you eventually but it's really good for practice as well it's really good to practice the same things over and over while your scenery changes and the way that what you're playing is interacting with your surroundings changes so it makes it a little bit more interesting you can also practice your exercises and drills and anything like that um, as long as you've found a way to make them sound a bit more interesting, so if you're playing paradiddles, move them around the handpan, make it sound fun. Again, your floating audience is not going to know the difference between that and your best composition, because they're only going to hear a snippet. Unless people decide to stop and watch, then that's your cue to shift and to play your best composition. So busking is all about flexibility. Um, and about being open to how your surroundings will change what you want to play and you know the weather might change the, the amount of people walking past might change you might need to get up and move some spots um, in certain cities and towns have you know like 40 minute kind of um, stopping points where you have to move to a different location um, but yeah again just being flexible to your surroundings being open to it is really important in busking and I think is the best part about busking that's the most fun thing um, and people will interact with you as well people will ask questions people will want to know what it is I've had a few um, instances where people have just approached me and hit the pan um, yeah people that do it because they think it's funny not because they're interested in what the instrument is and if you get anything like that just smile just let them do it and, and let them move on because it's not worth 
rising to it, it's not worth getting into a conversation with them because they don't want to know. Um, and they'll leave. <laughs> it happens. They 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 slap it and they and they go. Um, but that's well, unless you're busking in a really nice area, then you don't have to worry about things like that. But things like that might happen. So moving on then to a more relaxed setting, yoga sessions, meditation sessions, etc. Um, the comment that Dimitri left was actually on my video um, how to how to play for meditation. So. Yeah, I recommend checking that one out if you're interested in playing for those kind of settings. Similar to busking, I don't think you necessarily need an entire repertoire of compositions. Um, you do need to be open to the process, um, you do need to tune into what's happening in the room and adjust your playing accordingly. So improvisation is a really, really big part of it, I would say. But what you can do is you can structure that. So you can have little snippets of things that you know you want to play, that you know how to play. Especially when you're starting, then you're not just left with a blank canvas, you don't know, you don't know where to go with it. Um, have these little blocks of things that you like playing and then leave space in between for kind of moving your way to, towards the next thing and the next thing. Um, so structured improvisation. Yeah, you can even have longer snippets prepared, little mini compositions, um, again, of just really repetitive phrases, repetitive grooves, repetitive melodies. Play slow, play relaxed, play with your own breath, play, again, according to what else is happening in the room, and play something very, very simple so that you can tune in and so that you can um, also meditate and relax. It does help to have compositions, but I think that the, the process is a lot more important for that kind of situation. Coffee shops may be a little bit more leaning towards the composition side, um, but again, just being open to the, to the vibes in the room and, and adjusting accordingly. So in terms of compositions then, that took a few takes, can't say that word, compositions. Um, I do have a video on four ways to approach writing your own music, so do go check that out um, if you're still working on your repertoire. But yes, it is important to have, to have a wide repertoire before you perform. It might be that you get to the stage and a certain piece that you're wanting to, to play suddenly goes from your brain. In that case, it's good to have a backup that isn't in the set list so that you can just switch to that. Yeah, having backups really helps as well. Yeah, and I think, you know, it doesn't have to be this big deal. It doesn't have to be a huge thing that you prepare for, um, depending on the context, I suppose. I think the, the key is to just remember that your goal here is to just share what you've created and to share how you're feeling and to share music with other people. It's not to be the most amazing performer anybody's ever seen. It's not to, you know, show off and look cool. It's just to share and to be open and to have that experience, that 50-50 experience between you and the listener. Um, and they should very much feel a part of it as well. It's not performer audience. I don't really believe in that. I think that sometimes this idea of I am the musician or you are the musician and I am the audience can really put a lot of people off from performing ever because they don't feel worthy of it because they still feel like a beginner um, or they feel like a hobbyist but if you can get out of that mindset of you know this is only a thing that professionals do and we pay them to do it this is you know if we can remember that actually music is for sharing it's for communication and it's for community and culture then it doesn't matter who we are, all that matters is that we are sharing. And that's the main goal. So, yeah, go do it. <laughs> go perform, have fun, share with people, play music with people, and um, enjoy. And I'm so excited for more live music to be accessible again, and open again, and to perform again. And um, yeah, and I hope that a lot of you will also go and, and do the same. Open mic nights, you know, little festivals, Take it out on the streets, take it to your friends, do whatever, just practice, get out of your comfort zone, have a little bit of fun with it, stretch yourself, um, and you will feel amazing. <laughs> I promise you, it's such a good feeling. Um, but yeah, anyway, thank you for making it this far in the video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I love having the inspiration, thank you so much. If you would like to support what I do, you can find me on Patreon. 
um, where I post extra handpan content and other stuff as well. Um, I also uh, donate to different tree planting charities in your name. If you'd like to find other teachers and other beginners courses, you can have a look at masterthehandpan.com. Um, I'll leave a link in the description below. Um, also, just YouTube handpan tutorial and, and learn from other people because I think it's really important to learn from lots of different lots of different people and find lots of different styles and interpretations. Um, and yeah, I hope you have a great day. I hope you have a great week. And I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you so much.